Welcome, welcome ladies and gentlemen to a brand new video. Since the formation of Riot Forge back in 2019, the publisher was created with the sole purpose of breaking into the single player gaming market through the use of smaller indie companies to tell the stories of their most fascinating League of Legends characters. And with a quartet of releases coming under the Riot Forge banner, I thought now was a good time as any to analyse each of them. So sit back, relax, and don't hate me for my rankings. Nobody wants to be last place, but one of the games had to be there, and that game is Hextech Mayhem. Now, this title isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's a solid rhythm game with superb animations and smooth gameplay. My only issue I had with this game was the theming of it, and by that I mean their choice of Six as the star of this game. When you think of rhythm games, you would naturally gravitate towards champions such as Sona or Seraphine as potential headliners of this game. But with Ziggs' playstyle of Explosion, this game never really felt right for the champion they picked, so the end result didn't really encourage many, like myself, to be very excited by the prospect of the experience. The marketing was also very low on this game, barely seeing any mention of this game's release, which may have influenced how well the game sold. Coming in at third place we have the Mage Seeker. This quirky 8-bit-esque action-adventure game had its great moments, telling the story through the eyes of Silas of the Demacian Mage's revolution and setting it apart from the others with its darker tone. There are two main factors which made this game lower however. One is the lack of voice work on the game, which was a decision they decided on to, as they put it, fit the style of the game better. However, when you see Convergence's voice work in comparison, it really does bring the story to life more and give more meaning to the words that are spoken. The gameplay itself can also be a little bit monotonous also, with the stealing magic becoming a bit awkward to use very fast which mainly left me just spamming a combo to beat the game. Second place goes to Convergence, and don't get me wrong, this is a very close second in regards to first place. The story, voice work, cinematics and gameplay are all fantastic in this game, offering a challenging adventure to fans of Metroidvania games new and old. My only main issue with this game was the slightly one-dimensional personalities of the characters we face, particularly Warwick as just a beast, and Camille being a bit more friendly than I believe she would have been given her original lore material. And first place goes to the game which I haven't featured on my channel, The Ruined King. There was a few factors as to why this game is in the top spot. Firstly, it is the way which the game flows, slowly introducing characters throughout the game, allowing you to focus on each new champion story individually, and giving you a fresh new style of gameplay once they become part of your party. My personal favourite is Alawi, which the game does a fantastic job of making into an absolute powerhouse of a woman. The turn-based combat is also one of the best, blending time and mana together seamlessly to create a tough but fair combat system, especially on the hardest difficulty. The environments to explore are fantastic, and the game's visuals really do the best job for me of giving the best depiction of the Runeterran universe. I just wanted to say lastly that every single one of these games are fantastic, and this is merely just my opinions. If you disagree with me, I completely understand, and let me know your rankings in the comments if you wish to. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day, please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and as always, I'm Riot Intel, and I'm out.